What's going on, everybody? You are listening to The Place Where Sports Opinions Collide, Dead in Sports. I'm your host, Kenneth B. Inge. On the line with me is FIFO. FIFO, what up? Yo, what it do, what it do? Chilling, chilling, chilling. And, of course, uh, BZ430. B, what up? What up, though? Chilling, man. Join this NBA playoffs. You know what I'm saying? NBA playoffs. Jeez. And, uh... You know what, B, I'll go in and say it. Hey, hey, if you guys are on Twitch, <laughs> follow oh the God. 430 on Twitch. Follow your boy on Twitch, KBN, K-B-I-N-G-E. B, what's your Twitch handle? Oh, same as always, man. BZ430 across the board. So B-E-E-Z-Y-430. That's a man that no 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 marketing and, and branding, man, keeping it consistent. And yeah. uh, and, and, and my young starner, the, uh, my firstborn, Kobe TV. Uh, K O B I T V four is his, and um, and there's a reason why I'm announcing this uh, to be announced later. But if you guys are smart, you probably can figure it out. So yeah, go ahead and do that first, and then later on, the rest is coming. Um, while you at it, subscribe to the podcast, please. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please. Um, May first, things are gonna things are gonna be different around here so um so yeah so go ahead and get on board with that um check out your boy 12 cow he was here last week good to have the brother uh back with us for for another week uh it was fun as always uh, a little throwback so it was good having him in the uh taking the helm for uh, for last week uh filling in for fifo uh so follow his podcast 12 cow podcast uh of course the usuals the technical file podcast with manny and uh, Chris Platty, Strictly Hip Hop and Strictly B-Ball Talk. Um, B, I don't know if you saw that, but he did something with John Connor. It was like a John Connor week. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I, I know he was getting ready to do that because we had did the Race to Five Nine review on this um, podcast. So. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yep. See, he had mentioned it to me that he was going to start, you know, he was getting ready to start that up. Bad, bad, bad. So, yeah, check out, uh, yeah, check out John Connor week. And, of course, go check out the episode with BZ430 on there. And um and I'm on the episode with with uh with Manny too on the Technical File podcast. Um so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started, man. So this week is uh we're going to do things a little bit different. Um we're going to talk about the basketball playoffs, but we we are taking your questions. So um today I just spontaneously decided, hey, letting everybody know we're recording, send us your questions and we'll answer them on the show. So that's what we're doing. Um, so before we get into that, uh, there's just a couple of big headlines that we want to want to just talk about real quick. So the NFL play draft is Thursday. Uh, there's been daily conversations about quarterbacks and Saquon Barkley and Lamar ja- Jackson to to the Patriots, um, all of that noise. So um, we're not doing like a NFL draft preview because the draft is so full of boom and bust. That it's just not like the NBA. It's just not like the NBA. But there are guys at the top, the quarterbacks, and then there's, of course, obviously, Saquon Barkley and Bradley Chubb. Um, among the quarterbacks, uh, B, who do you think should go first? Who should the Browns take with the number one draft pick? Um, They should go, uh, I guess, uh, big boy, big uh, ben, ben Roethlisberger, prototype body-wise um, from Wyoming. Um, Josh his name Allen. Allen? Yeah, 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 Allen. I was about to say his last name Allen. Yeah, my man from Wyoming. Just I think with the safe pick, just go with that. Um, let have him under the clipboard for a year. It'll still, still make uh, Tyrod Taylor your starter. Um, I, I hate to use that term, like use him as like a, I guess, an insurance work or something. See how he, do, you know, kind of like see how he plays this season and right. keep um Allen under the clipboard this 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 upcoming season. Let him let him you know watch under Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, hopefully, from the Browns coming off of zero sixteen season, hopefully they can go you know seven and nine or six and ten or something like that. Um, but um, yeah, I think they should just go with that with the safe pick with the with the first pick. And hopefully, I don't I doubt this will happen. But if Barkley falls to him at four, you gotta get him. You have to get him. You have to get him if he falls to four. But yeah, I think they should just go with QB man. At least at least. You building something with that from scratch, and you never know. If Tyrod Taylor, if he's cool with being a multi-millionaire backup QB, you know, let him be. Let him let that happen. If Allen can kind of 
fill in that space and be a starter within a year or two years from now. So, you know, I say I say get the QB. Uh, FIFA, would you take Allen or would you take someone else if you were the Browns? You know, the Browns, it, it just seems like they can't do nothing right, right? And right. Two first off picks in the first five picks. Um, we hear rumors they're going to take two quarterbacks. That would be um, so stupid. That is the dumbest thing. <laughs> that is, see, now, now if you want to take two quarterbacks that you want to take one at one or the first one at four and then use your second, third, or fourth round pick on the second one, I'm cool with that. But you can't use the number one and number four picks on the quarterback. That's that's that's, 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 that's stupid. That's right. That's, oh my god, that, that like that would be the wrong move. Now, I think the safest pick to me is Sam Darnold. Um, but mm. I, I think where Cleveland is and, and the level of talent that, that they've been able to accumulate, I think they have to go safe pick. So that's the reason why I'm going Sam Darnold. I don't think anything is super special about the guy outside of he can, he, he makes the play that needs to be made, um, and he's just solid. But the, the other guys, I think, have more upside. Uh, Josh Allen and who's the other guy? Uh, Rosen. Um, yeah. Ro- yeah, Rosen from UCLA. Yeah, my yeah, dude from yeah. UCLA. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think both of those guys have bigger upside. But if I'm Cleveland, I, I feel like I'd rather take the safer pick J- just because they have not had success. And I think uh, Darnold is – is. I'm not saying he's going to be a superstar. I don't think he's going to be Peyton. I don't think he's going to be – Aaron Rodgers or anything like that, but I think that he can be a better version than Alex Smith. And I and I think where the Browns are, that's what you need to take. I don't think you need to take a guy that, oh, well, if we coach him right, nah, man, nah, man, you haven't had success with that yet. You know, so I think they need a starting point. I think Sam Darnold is the, the most logical pick for them. Or if they wanted to trade down and use the number four pick for a quarterback and accumulate two other first round picks or something like that, like I'm cool with that. I, I like I don't necessarily say that they got to use the first round, first pick for a quarterback, but they definitely need to take a quarterback whether it's one or four. They they, they have to do that. That 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 is a must. And at the end of the day, Sam Darnold, I think he's the safest guy for him, man. I don't think he need to take no risk. Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree with you there. And, you know, I, I've had my criticisms of Darnold, but I learned that he really just started playing football. Like, he played, like, one season in high school, and then, of course, he played, like, uh, two or a season and a half in, in college. So, I, but I think if you're, you are the Browns, picking Darnold is, is definitely safe, and nobody will fault you if he turns into a bust. Mm-hmm. If you pick Allen – and he turns into a bust, and Sam Darnold becomes the guy, then what? Now, there's a lot of hype about Josh Allen. Everybody's saying he is the man, like you said, B, uh, Big Ben uh, 2.0. But you have to trust that organization to be able to develop him. And you got to trust that who Jackson is the guy that the real QB whisperer that everybody uh, says that he is. I don't know if he is or not, but he's had success in the past with quarterbacks. So based on his track record, you would think so, but you are the Browns, and you also have your history going against you for whatever reason. So take Darnold. If he doesn't work out, he just doesn't work out. Now, where that can turn around and bite you later on is whether or not Saquon Barkley turns out to be the guy, the next Le'Veon Bell, um, or if if uh, Josh Allen does indeed turn out to be like the man. But he's so raw and underdeveloped. And, and to go to Cleveland, I think, would be a risk. So if I'm them, I would just take Sam Darnold and roll with it. Everybody's saying he's the consensus number one pick for the most part. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think anybody can fault you if it just doesn't work out. Um, so uh, the other guy that people are saying is the best player in the draft is Saquon Barkley. Uh, rumors now are uh, circling that the Giants will indeed take him if, if he's there. But, of course – that's Mistake. the situation. So you think they should go QB? They, they have to go QB. They have to go QB. Cause, look, man, we've been doing dead end sports for at least four or five years now. And I remember when we first started and we were actually doing videos. And I said, you know, uh, Eli is one of these guys that every other year he's going to have a good year. 
but he has yet to put back to back good years. You know what I'm saying? And he's only gotten worse. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing that shows or proves to me that he should be the starter moving forward. In all honesty, shit, if it was up, look, man, and and, and look, football is is, is, a, is a cutthroat sport. So, you know, it's not personal, but I cut Eli. I, I, I Because you're not going to trade him. Like, are, you really want Eli to groom your next guy? Eli, Eli wasn't Peyton. Eli, e, Eli wasn't surgical with it. You know what I'm saying? So, so I cut Eli. Wow. <laughs> I cut him. I cut him, and I drop a quarterback. And guess what? He's gonna be my starter day one. Two Super Bowl so rings. Got, he beat Brady twice. Doesn't matter. Thank you. What have you done for me lately? Look, <laughs> Belichick. Belichick is trying to get rid of Tom Brady, bro. Let's be honest. I, I look. I ain't. I, I don't have no connects. I don't know nobody. But look, I, I I know what it looks like outside looking in, and what it looks like is Belichick was ready to move on because he had his guy in Jimmy G, and 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 in football that that's what you have to do if you want to stay relevant. You gotta let him go, and Eli is at that point. Like, okay, can I put it to you like this? What NFL franchise, if Eli was a free agent today right now, would pick Eli up? Um, I don't know, because the Jets are probably going to take a quarterback. Buffalo yep. will probably get a quarterback somewhere. Yep. Uh, Washington traded for one. Arizona maybe, but they may get one. They they have to get one because you know the whole Carson Palmer thing is over. They're not going to go back to old quarterback. Like, what's the re- see? That's 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 what I'm saying. What's the what's the risk in taking this this old beat up quarterback? Yeah. Is, is he going to make you a Super Bowl contender? Hell no. He's not that guy. So you got to move on from him. In all honesty, he should be looking for booth jobs. Even if on TV. Damn. That's what Eli is now. FIFO cold with it today. I know so who's, cold blooded boy. I know. Yeah, right? I'm just saying. Yeah, let who should they pick go. then? Who would you pick? Um, uh, I'll probably pick. I think I think Josh Allen if if he's still available. Uh, mainly because of the bigger arm, you know, in that New York win and in, in, in that weather, you need that. Um, so that's who I would like to get. But if you take uh Rosen or Allen, I, you gotta take one of them guys. You gotta take mm-hmm. one of them or Darnold. One of those three, whichever one, like like whoever gets taken number one, you have a you have a pick of the the, the one of the other two guys, and I think that's what they got to do. Saquon Barkley is nice, only if you had a young quarterback right now. But with Eli, that like look, man, if they take Saquon, where, where does that put them in the NFC? Like, are they better than the Cowboys? Are they better than Philly? Are they better than 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 the Redskins? Everybody better than the Redskins. But um, are they really better? Can they contend if you get Saquon Barkley, you keep Eli? Not with that offensive line. I think that's the, that's my concern. That line, they've been drafting running backs, but the line can't block for them. So that's the reason why they should have traded OBJ, get more Ooh. draft picks, for, um, cut Eli, draft your quarterback, shore up that O line. You know, because the weapon you can go get weapons. It looked like Julio don't want to be in Atlanta no more. He maybe could have got who I'm just saying, man. You got I would I would have severed ties with OBJ. I would have traded him and got as much as I could for him, and I would have definitely got gotten rid of uh, Eli. E- e- Eli would have been gone. He'd have been free agent. Man, B. Uh, FIFO done traded o- o- Odell Beckham Jr. He done cut Eli. Uh, Jesus. I mean, I mean, but I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with it because at he this rebuilding. point, you, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, because once you let go of your guy that you've been your quarterback, when I mean your guy, your quarterback that you've been riding for the last what twelve to thirteen years, you know, at this point, if you know if you know he's at the end of this road, why not start the rebuilding process? Why not? You know what I'm saying? So I mean, yeah, I don't have an issue with what FIFO saying that I don't, I ain't going to say, dang, that's wrong. But like, Hey, it's a business. So, you know, and we already know what Odell Beckham, he's drama. So, Hey, it's a business, man. Got to do what you got to do. You got to move on. Got to start from scratch. So, so that's, you that's went to part of the process. Yeah. I, so I, mean, you, I would do that too. So you wouldn't take Barkley. Too. You said I wouldn't take Barkley. 
Yeah, I'm asking exactly. you to take Barkley or Yeah. You gotta take Barkley, man. <laughs> gotta, See, man. You know, he's like you know, but you know you know what? Because he's like one of those guys where he's NFL ready. Like unless he go to a a, a system that's has horrible offensive line, this guy is ready, man. The I mean, Giants' his, offensive line is horrible, B. Yeah, and he might go there, too. <laughs> he might end up going there, which is sad. But still, eh, I would probably just get a QB then. If you if you plan on letting, letting whatchamacallit, walk, get your QB. But but they not, though. You know, like they, like they committed to they Eli. Not. They, they yeah. say Eli the starter next year. I'm like, what? What? They not, yeah. Look, I don't. Yeah, I know. Get get your QB at that second spot, man. You you. It's going to be some that's that's there. That's that's so called supposed to be quality that you can grab. Get them exactly, exactly. Because look, at the end of the day, in football, you you can have a turnaround season if you have a young viable quarterback. You know what I'm saying? And I think I think the Giants they need to stop thinking they're a model franchise like like the Steelers or even like the Patriots. Um, and, and understand that you have to rebuild. You, you're in rebuilding mode. We're not in let's continue the dynasty. You are in, okay, we had our run. Let's tr- let's make sure we get back to it. Look at what Philly did. They drafted a quarterback, got them weapons, got defense, and now they're a championship contender, right? And they're going to be that for the foreseeable future until certain guys retire, certain guys move on, certain yep. guys get hurt. But they yep. have a quarterback. They have the stability. What is the New York Giants beyond this season? We have a question mark behind them. But if you draft a quarterback this year, we know at least for the next three to four years, it's his team. And we can see the progression, right? Like, we, we, we don't put a high bar for rookie quarterbacks. We just want to see, can you compete? Can you make plays? You know what I'm saying? When the, when the time gets tough. You know, are you one that's going to put your head down? Or are you going to be like, yo, that didn't even happen. Let's go. We ready. Right? right? Like, that's what you want to see out of a rookie quarterback so that way you can build for the future. But as of right now, what is the future of the Giants? OBJ? Oh, he's a what? He's an accessory. He's not a foundation. So so that's why I would have got rid of him. I, I definitely would have got rid of Eli. I would have shored up that O-line. I would have drafted me a quarterback this season. And then you then then you think about two, three years down the road. That, that, that's where the Giants need to be. They, they can't be thinking right now because Eli is not right now. And especially, Ken, you, you, you're mentioning the, the, the poorest offensive line. This guy's never been mobile. He's older now. Come on, man. Like, like I just uh, Sometimes, logically, I don't understand where these franchises are. They got to move on. They, they, it's, it, you yep. got a, a, a new regime in there already. Then you need new guys. You need you gotta move new on. blood. Yep. You need a new face of the franchise because it yep. ain't Eli and OBJ could be that, but this team is not ready for OBJ to be that. So you got to move on. That's right. Well, you, yeah. Well, I, I, I look. I don't have much much to add, man. Um, I think you can go any either way, but I, I think I will go ahead and get my quarterback mainly because there's talent here, and you don't know what the Nets couple of draft classes would would present uh so so yeah i, w- I would pass and and get me a quarterback so i'm with you and um and have him hold that clipboard for for a year or two um uh that being said so i think they'll what i'm hearing is they'll probably take josh rosen which would leave baker mayfield and lamar jackson on the board and um right now uh well, according to one mock, they got the Giants taking Barkley. You already said that mistake. But if Rosen is gone, I don't know what the Jets do. So I'll just leave that one uh, up for grabs. We'll let's see how that play out. Right now, some people are thinking they'll take Rosen, which I think will be a good fit. Um, but, no, actually, here's what I want to say. I think Baker Mayfield will be a good fit for the Jets, mainly because he has the temperament and the style for New York. He's big time. He's an attraction. And um and he's a competitor. And I think the Jets need somebody that has that type of moxie um uh with them. So um so yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing him going there. So and I've seen some mocks with him being selected there. But the guy I'm more interested in, unless you guys have something on that, is Lamar Jackson. Well, 
Go ahead. Well, hold on. Yeah, well, well, no, I think I think you're spot on with Baker Mayfield being the face of the Jets, right? Like, if we think of the history of the Jets and what that pers- what, what that uh, franchise personifies is braggadocio, is in your face. It it, it, it is all of that. You know, it's Joe Namath, it's uh, yep. Brian Cox, it's um um you know Santana Moss, it's it's uh Muhammad Wilkers. It, it, it's so many guys. You know what I'm saying? And I think Baker Mayfield plays into the history of what the Jets have been. Um, I, I would question his arm strength in that weather and also his hand size in that weather. But outside of that, I think he checks every other box that the Jets would want out of a quarterback. Yeah, so Darnold's gone. Rosen's gone. Mayfield is gone. So, B, that leads Saquon Barkley to the Cleveland Browns. If it play out like that, uh, which you said yep. you, it would, would hopefully you would, you would love to do. Um, so yeah, hopefully they would. I mean, yeah, that, if you, that, that's that's a dream scenario for Cleveland, yep. man. Like that's yep. a dream. That's a dream scenario. You you get arguably in going into the draft. I mean, of course we don't know how his career going to pan out, but you arguably grabbing pretty much like the rank one QB of the draft, right? And your number one overall pick. Then you come back and get arguably the number one rank running back in your in the draft to to talk about rebuilding. Talk about going from. 0 oh, and 16 to now you have what we think is the best QB coming into the draft and the best running back. What better way you need to start from zero from scratch to the draft a top QB and a top running back? Come on, that's like a dream scenario for the for the Browns. So if that and isn't happens, Josh Gordon coming back? Yes, he's already back. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Josh oh, Gordon, you got Josh Gordon. You already got Carlos High as your back. Like he's a solid back, and then you you can. You know, he, he and him and uh, Barkley would be, you know, running that ball and then probably Barkley end up becoming the, the Ty Gurley type of starter for the Browns. And then you got Carlos Hyde backing him up, taking some kids. Man, man, that's that's a good scenario for Cleveland, man. They, they already got the receivers tight end, QB, mm-hmm. and, and running backs checked as far as the young talent. You know what I'm saying? So dream scenario. At that point, if you draft – if you draft – um. Those that QB and, and and running back Barkley, you can pretty much work on your offensive line. You can work on some defense. You know, like you could that that gives you so much room in the rest of the draft because they got a whole lot of picks. You can work on offensive linemen. You can work on defensive tackles. You can work on you know some you know get a, a crucial linebacker because at that point, and you know when you get on the defensive side, you can still pick gems in the third, fourth, fifth round. Like so. And if the Browns play this smart and if that scenario happens, man, that, that's a dream scenario for the Browns. Hey, you said it all there, man. Um, so the last one, uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, we, we, uh, we're we big fans of Lamar Jackson on this show. I know I am. Um, we've all spoken highly of him at some point in time on the show. Uh, rumors, and we know how these reports can be and these rumors are, especially with the draft, is that New England – they are interested in Lamar Jackson. Um, what do you guys think about that? Because that seems like an odd fit. At least it does to me. I don't know how that'll work. What do you guys think? I think that's extremely interesting. Um, I'm scared. I, I, I think, <laughs> okay, I, I put it to you like this. If Bill Belichick drafts Lamar Jackson and Lamar gets to play either next year or the year after, and Belichick wins with this guy. He's like already he's like the the greatest coach. But I but I think it's not even arguable at that point. You know what I'm saying? Because because you're 100 percent right. Like look at all of the coaches that he's had. I mean coaches. All, all of the quarterbacks that he's had. Drew Bledsoe, obviously Tom. Um, you know, uh, all, all the other days. You know, Garoppolo. You know what I'm saying? So if he brings in Lamar, Matt Castle, Lam- Matt Castle. You say he's made guys' careers. Oh, uh, uh, Jacoby Brissett. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If he's able to bring in Lamar, and Lamar progresses, and he has any uh, pocket IQ, if he's able to develop that, and also you know being able to 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 to, to play underneath center, oh my God, we're, we're talking we're talking Vic 2.0 because because I have not, and, and I I think Vic was definitely on another level as a quarterback than Lamar Jackson. But I think Lamar Jackson is the same level of athlete as Michael Vick. And if 
Bill Belichick can untap that quarterback potential in him, I, I, man, he's going to run the league another seven years, eight years, maybe more. It, it, it's scary. It's scary. But it's definitely questionable. I, I, I don't know yeah, I'm how scared. that looks. I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> Why are you nervous? Because, because when I see that, and, you know, it's going to be hard for the, for the Patriots to let go of that golden boy in Tom Brady. I can definitely see Bill Belichick and them doing some sneaky stuff and switching them to raw receiver, playing a, playing a speedy position, man, I, or, or being a, a, a kickoff return. Something crazy, nah, man. Lam- Lamar something. said he ain't playing nothing but QB, yo. Man, and I, but you know what? If he get drafted, man, I can I can see I can see them. I can see that whole Patriots organization taking him to the sunken place, and he'll come back out of that training camp, <laughs> and he'll be he'll be ready he'll be ready to run a four he'll be ready to run a four three forty. And and they put him in a slot somewhere, and then he'd be returning kickoffs and everything, and we'd be like, "What the hell?" Because you know what's gonna happen? Patriots gonna take him in the back and put him in the sucking place. He gonna he gonna walk in the training camp like, "Yeah, I'm going for QB." They are gonna be like, "Hey, yo, let me holler at you for a second, Lamar. Hey, hey come, come over here in this meeting." And as you know, they gonna close that door, lock it. He gonna come back out. You know what? I can do whatever I want to do for this team to help this team win. <laughs> He's gonna be out there running. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. That's why I'm scared. That's why I'm scared, Ken. Fifo, that's why I'm scared. I'm scared they're going to take him and put him in a sucking place. He's going to come back and he's going to be willing to do anything to help the team win. He don't care. If it, it don't care if it has to him to play wide right receiver or kick return or go into that slot. He's going to do it. That's why I'm scared. They they're going to take him out of that QB position, man. They're going to be like, nah, uh, <laughs> not you. <laughs> you ain't you ain't about to be the face of our franchise at the time Brady leave. No, I don't. I, I'm scared, Ken. I'm scared. They have him out there running like a. Uh... Black grandpa was in that movie. In the right, movie, huh? right, right, right. <laughs> he's gonna be looking. Still to he's gonna be looking race. just like that. Yeah, still trying to win that race, man. Still trying to. He's gonna be out there throwing balls just to nobody and stuff, trying to get that QB still. <laughs> trying. Jesus um, Christ. I, I'll just say this to address what what Kyle uh, tweeted us today. Uh, what would happen if he did draft him? And you guys know how I feel about New England. Um, pro brother. That I mean, pro brother, man. As long as he playing QB, um, I'm gonna support the brother, man. So, um, so that's all I gotta say. So we'll see how that play out. Wait a minute. So, so this means you're gonna get a Lamar Jackson Patriots jersey? I don't have a football <laughs> jersey. No, B. <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm just I know you. Are. <laughs> oh uh, man, that would be hilarious. I, yes. I should get one just for kicks. Um, oh my. Anyway, that's all we got on the uh, the, the draft. Um, you know, it's all going to shake down Thursday. Uh, we'll see how everything plays out. And then, uh, you know, uh, we'll be back into the, <laughs> the NBA playoffs. Uh, NFL, man, they so slick, man. They, they, they really try to stay on your TV screen or in your, your, your uh, everyday life um, 24-7. 365 days a week. Anyway, let's get back to these NBA playoffs, man. Uh, exciting playoffs so far. A lot of things have happened. We've been uh, shocked by some things that have occurred um, in the Western Conference uh, in particular. Um, and we're going to get into that. We got, like I mentioned earlier, we got a lot of basketball-related questions from Twitter. So we'll um, we'll address some of that. So, But first, man... Um, Kyle sent us this uh, in the in the thread, and Westbrook might be suspended. And I'll just say this: I think he will be. Um, he was scheduled to check in. There was a skirmish between uh, Felton hit Gobert, and Gobert went down. There was a skirmish, and Westbrook ended up on the court. And um, we all know what happened when San Antonio and Phoenix got into it and many argue to this day that that cost um phoenix that series yep it cost them that because they was gonna they was gonna play in the finals yep it was gonna be in the finals yep so the nba they they don't play with this rule they don't care who you are they don't care the situation um that being said you guys think he's gonna be suspended i don't think he is um i can't see that but I know the rules are rules. I know it's like, okay, you got to abide by the rules. That goes for everybody. We don't care what's, you know, superstar or bench player or whatever. Uh, that would be a bad way for them to lose Westbrook and them to go out in this series like that. Um, 
I don't know what Adam Silver's going to do. Wouldn't, but it, I, wouldn't it be what? fitting, though, if you think about it, like Westbrook suspended, given everything that's taken place so far, wouldn't it kind of just be like the perfect, Man, not the perfect ending, but, I know, you know. I, yeah, uh, that would be kind of wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't want to see that, but. I wouldn't either, but would it surprise you? Uh, no, it, it kind of wouldn't. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It wouldn't surprise me, but damn, come on, man! Not, not don't go out like that. Not like, not like that, Ken. It's like, it's like, oh. it's like hard for me to accept it. You know what, B? I, I yeah. live update uh, during the recording. You're right. Uh-huh. Uh, you're absolutely right. He he wasn't suspended. They found him ten thousand dollars, and did suspend him for the altercation. Wow, okay. Good. that Good. is interesting. And they gave him a technical yeah. file. Uh okay. So they gonna come out shooting free throws or something that first the uh, game or something like that. Yeah. So anytime you leave the bench, that's a one game suspension, automatic. Um, but I guess since he was, and I'm just reading this live now, um, since he was due to enter the game, they just felt they'll find him instead. Um, and Westbrook. Here's what Westbrook told the reporters. Uh, Westbrook told reporters he heard the horn to allow him into the game. He said, I was already in the game. Once I was in the game, they told me to wait because they were going to review it. Once they, they did that, the altercation happened, so I was already on the floor. Okay. All right. Cool. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. That's so, loophole. No Westbrook. <laughs> loophole, FIFA. Loophole. You know, man, it's America, man. This is America. <laughs> There's always a loophole. I guess. I guess Westbrook means more than the entire Phoenix Suns uh, <laughs> team. Um, all right, well, that settles that. So there you have it. Um, next, um, bef- let me jump to Anthony Davis, man. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Um, they, swept the, they swept the Blazers. Dame made us look bad. Uh, there was a, there's a, obviously a lot of reasons for that. Defensive coverages forcing them, you know, to give up the ball. Dame commenting on that. People on Twitter are saying that we need to have a conversation about Dame. No, we don't. No, um, no. I mean, like, like, like I said on Twitter, and I, I think, I think FIFA was tagged in this too. Like, and unless this starts become a pattern, you know, but no. it has been though. It, it, look, if if you but look we, at if you look at every single playoff series outside of the first one that he had that walk off uh, three point shot against Houston, the man has shot. I, I, he's averaged in every other series to, uh, uh, under thirty five percent shooting. But 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 I, I I get that you're right, people. But come on, let, let let's look at eye tests here. You you know how when we see guys body language or we see guys but not I, playing hard. But B, but are you judging him off of playoff Dame or regular season Dame? Because regular season Dame's that guy. But in play, the playoffs, play. the last four years, he has struggled. But it's not like he's it's not like he's like giving up. Man, we seen players like I give like you that. We, that's but, what but, I'm saying. But, no, wait, hold saying. on, B. B, we know that sports is about results. Wins, losses, and how well did you play? He has not played well since that first series. So are you a Dame apologist? No, I'm not. But I, it ain't like uh, James Harden, man. Like I feel like when 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 the when the lights is bright, dude, this he disappears, man. Like he literally disappears. And I, and I like Dame. Well, in, in this particular situation, in this just the series, I really think he just saw some defenses that he just what that he wasn't. That he wasn't used to seeing, and I, and I think he couldn't adjust, and and then it was the coach's job for to adjust, and they didn't make the right adjustments, just in this particular series. But yeah, you're right. I looked at that too. His shooting percentage is freaking awful in the playoffs only in the last four to five four to five years. So I give you that. I give you that. But I guess I'm just like, look, at least this dude is out here fighting. He's out here trying his best. He's I, I playing. Can't. Where we but see you know, superstars just literally disappear, like be go away. And I, like but, they but go look, away. But but here but here's the thing though. Like, just because Dame plays hard, he has to gain results somehow, some way. Because you can have ugly losses or, or, or ugly game where you still win, right? But, 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 but Dame is not winning at all. And, and, and it's not because of lack of trying. We know he's trying, and teams are scheming him out of it, right? So we got to 
Dame doesn't get all of the blame. Some of that is also yeah, Terry Stotts, right? Yeah, but right. that's not all of So, it. so, so we understand that. Wants. But at the end of the day, B, it's about results. It's about results. It's about results. Yeah, I see it. I, I, and, I get you. And all I'm saying is you, you're sounding like a Dame apologist right now. And I... I <laughs> You, you, because, like man, it, because, you know what it was? It was mm-hmm. it was this interview he did. Man. I think it was recently. I think I retweeted it. He was just like talking about like the different defenses coverage that was forcing them to like pass the ball. And I'm like, man, I feel I felt bad for him. I was like, man, I, I I like I know that feeling as a ball player. It's like you know that feeling where like teams play a certain defense or they scheme a certain way towards you, and you like, fuck, they taking me away from like getting in the rhythm or taking taking me taking away of from course. me. But you know but, you know, but 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 B, this is why I'm saying you sound like an apologist because we can't give that pass to Bron, we can't give that pass to to to, to KD, we can't give that pass to Steph, like like none of the other greats. Because remember, we're talking about Dame supposed to be in the MVP conversation. Dame is supposed to figure some of that out. Dame got, and you know what? Look, Jordan got swept, so it's not about being swept, but at least Jordan had at least one or two good games in that sweep. Dame has, did not he have a good, good game. game. No, he, didn't. he didn't even have really a good did. stretch. Nope, he didn't. He really you know didn't. Because sometimes didn't. we know, like like you said, right? We both hoop. We still hoop to this day. Sometimes the way a, a, a defense can strategize against you will take you out of your, your stuff. But a great player will still have stretches of you can't stop me. And Dame didn't have none of that. Dame looked like a deer in the headlights, bro. So that's why I'm saying you sound Dame like a Dame did. apologist. I got to call Dame man. out. And again, I'm not putting 100% blame on Dame, but Dame, Dame has to take the brunt of that because Dame wants to be considered an MVP candidate. Dame wants to be on the All-Star team. Dame wants to be on the USA team, and he's earned that. But you become a household name in the playoffs. And in this series, he he looked like he looked like a role player, man. He really Yeah, did. man, he shot he shot like I think he barely averaged 20 points a game. Like, he barely sniffed 20 points a game. He shot, like, 25% one game. I think it was game one or game two. He shot 25%, you know. And I even and, and FIFA, I even said this. I was like, man, Dame and CJ is being outplayed by Rondo and um, Drew Holiday. Like, yeah. they are, he, he, is, he was clearly being outplayed. I was like, as much as I hate for me to say this, Dame is being outplayed by, by the two people we, we would have never thought. That would have like outplayed him like this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In this matchup, so I get you, I, I get it. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't step up, he didn't, step, he didn't up. step up, he didn't step up at all. And think about it, be and, and all I'm saying is we gave him so much praise. Right? We like, did. They got, they That's got why, the why I was so angry. Team. He's balling. <laughs> was, this all this. Yep. Hey, yep. W- when it don't go your way, you gotta call it. You gotta call it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't give him no, 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 no excuse. Yeah, you, no you're excuse. Supposed to be an MVP you're supposed to be that guy. Yeah. No yep. excuse, we can't give Dame. You supposed no to be excuse. that guy. You supposed to be that guy. Yeah, you supposed to be that dude. So we we pinned you as being that guy, and you didn't show us. You yep. didn't show us this series, man. You got swept two years in a row. Yep. Because look, I I even put it to you like this: CJ had stretches of dominance, stretches, not a whole game, but in moments, four or five minute moments, CJ was getting off. Dame Dame was nowhere to be found, man. And and, and you know what? Like my yeah, coaching brain Jay went off the three, yeah. and I felt that Terry Stotts did an awful job of using Dame as a decoy, Move, moving Dame more so without the ball to get him more catch and shoot opportunities versus um creating opportunities off of the bounce. Because obviously Drew Holiday was all up in that man pocket and they had help uh. everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So so you got to move Dame around. And, and and I know I'm going a little bit left right now, but that's partly the reason why Golden State is so dangerous because Steph Curry moves without the ball. Can he shoot off the dribble? Of course. But that man gets a lot of shots off of passes, off of ball movement, off of him moving around, off of long rebounds. We didn't see any of that from Portland. And part, like I said, part of that is Terry Stotts. I think he has a great offensive system. I think he has maximized them. But we saw, and I, you know, Kenny Smith said it the best. He said, sometimes the, the, the regular season shows you what you can be, and the playoffs shows you what you are. And, you, yep. and Portland yep. needs that three man. I think that they, they're stuck in that uh, Clippers of a couple of years ago when they had that championship run yep, where they yep. didn't have that, that small forward slash, you know, small power forward that, 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 that can switch up and, and physically and impact defend, the game. Yep. And defend 
boat defend Both most positions. positions. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. They don't have yeah, that. They don't guy. have that. Nope. They don't. And, and I think that that's their problem. If they had that guy, I'm not going to say that it would have changed the series, but I think it would have freed up Dane and CJ a bit more. They don't have a guy that can release pressure off of their two main guys, and that's a problem. You know, and that's why I find it difficult to blame him. Um, but I think you, you, you made a good point. We we did spend a lot of time, you know, pumping him up. And, you know, he, he didn't show up. You know, like I tweeted, he, he was making us look bad. And I, I felt that for me when I, when I watched him play, I didn't really take into consideration – the rest of the players on the Pelicans. I thought it was still Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis, and that was it. I, I just I, I just totally ignored. Um, I knew Drew Holiday was there, and I knew what Rondo was about, but I think the guy that made the difference in that series was Meritage. I totally forgot about Meritage. Yep. Because I remember what this team looked like last year when they pretty much still had the same roster with Boogie. And Meritage, to me, made the difference. The guy just couldn't miss um, so I didn't really take that into consideration. And when I looked at the results of this, this, that series, um, and, and it manifested itself into a four into a sweep, you know, I was like, it, it showed me the flaws. And you were kind of alluding to this a few seconds ago, FIFO of, of the Portland trailblazers and the deficiencies that they have under, they had a bunch of young guys that haven't been developed and were not developed throughout the year. And, you know, you're relying on Aminu and, and Harkless and Evan Turner. And going back to what Kenny Smith said, that's, that's you know, that's not, that's not enough. It's clearly in the playoffs showed that. So Dame is enough to win games in, in, in the regular season, but in the playoffs you need much, much more. But one of the takeaways I took from game four was Anthony Davis got off. Not by himself. Drew Holiday put up 41-2. But, man, that performance by Anthony Davis to close that series out, that's when you start to really become a superstar. And, and so we're looking ahead, and I'm just, I just couldn't help but wonder, is it, is it Anthony Davis' time? Like, what do you think? <laughs> Go ahead. You, you know what? When, when when you watch Anthony Davis in a groove, it it's almost like it's unfair because it's like, what can't this guy do? He he, he has handles like a guard. He 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 he's seven feet with 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 length, athleticism, IQ, stroke, three point mid range, back to the basket game, blocks, defense, rotation. It's it, it, it's almost it, when he plays at the level that he played at, it looks like it's unfair. It looks like there's nobody on this planet that can guard that. But I, I think he just got to stay healthy. And, and, you know, to your point, I think that this is his time. I think he has to seize the moment. Who who, who they playing in the second round? The winner of Golden State and Spurs. So Golden State. So 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 this is the opportunity to, yep. to put himself and the yep. Pelicans on the map. This yep. is the prime opportunity because everybody's watching Golden State. Go- Golden State is the NBA darling right now, right? They they are the dynasty of the NBA. So if if Anthony Davis can steal two, maybe three games, oh, he, his his his, his shoot. Passion. What what about they? What about they win the se- What if they shock? And win the hey, series because no, you know. No, no, no. no I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What if? I'm just saying because you know. I'm pretty sure Anthony Davis is motivated by this because you know the last time they went up against him, they get they got swept. They didn't get a game. You know, playoff Rondo is gonna be in Stephen Curry hurt mugs. You know, Stephen Curry is not gonna mm-hmm. be 100. percent Playoff Drew. Rondo, yeah, playoff Rondo. And let's 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 not forget, man, Drew Holiday. Now I think he's back into form because remember before the injuries and before his situation with his wife. You know, Drew was like looking. You know, he was the he was that he was that dude. You know what I'm saying? He was a he was a, a bona fide like up and coming star. So you know, until of course injuries and then his you know the situation with his wife and now like I think that his mind is clear. He's back focusing on basketball and we're seeing Drew Holiday look like the Drew Holiday of old. And I think I don't know, man. Like I said, what if I said if this is a, so yes. big if if, yeah. if they pull this off and Anthony Davis averaged like 42 points during this series, man. 
Man, oh man! You you you, you might you might have to. He look if he does that, he's staking his claim as the best player on the. Wow, that's what he's doing. If, if that happens, if, if yeah, no, not real talk. If, seriously, if if he could pull off and win this series and average anywhere between thirty-seven to like forty-one points a game while doing it, oh yeah, yeah. So you taking out the defending champs with Kevin Durant, and and you win. Oh yeah, you got to stake that claim as as the best in the world at the, at that point. Yep, you do, you do, because because you already know they're gonna put Draymond on him. You know they're gonna put KD on him some. And if he could just dot like nobody on this squad, because look, Golden State has a problem with LeBron, and and I'm going to say skillfully, Anthony Davis is on LeBron's level. Just LeBron just has way more accolades. He's just achieved more throughout his career than Anthony Davis has in his shorter career. But skillfully, there's only a handful of players that I will put on bronze level, and Anthony Davis is one of those guys. So, so if, if he could pull that off, man, that's a tremendous feat. Man, that would be incredible, and um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to that series. Um, and thinking about it, looking at this Pelicans team versus that Trailblazers team. I think it'll be far more exciting because, you know, the Blazers, I mean, what they had, they weren't going to be able to compete. So it uh, should be fun. All right. Um, last one, and then we get into the uh, listener questions. Um, they're playing right now. Um, they're up 3-1 over the Miami Heat. Um, right now the score is 72-59. So uh, with three minutes and 21 seconds left, in the third quarter, uh, unless something crazy happens, uh, it looks like they're going to close this one out. <sighs> we, we brought it up a couple of times on the show, fellas. A lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon. Let's give Q. Q brought it up first, um, and we kind of dismissed him. Chris Carter says, with new evidence, you have the right to change your mind. So I'm asking, have you guys changed your mind about the Sixers? I put it to you like this. Q isn't as crazy as we once said he was on this show. Um, and the proof is in the pudding, man. Um, you, you, you look at their numbers, their defensive, their defensive efficiency. Um, you look at how many threes that they're hitting. You look at how they're playing. I will only say that their only Achilles heel is experience. But the one thing that can overcome that is tremendous talent. We see Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, LeBron have early success in their careers. So that's not to say that uh, Ben Simmons and Embiid can't have early success. And looking at the the path to the championship, who, who looks like the best team in the East? It looks like Philly. And when we look at LeBron and them, and they're struggling against Indiana, Finley would probably sweep Indy, or at least gentlemen sweep them like they about to do Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, like so. So if if Cleveland is struggling with them, and we know that that's the best basketball player on the planet, right? And we know we can't trust Toronto, and Boston is decimated. Philly, Philly's the best squad in the East, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I, I look. Can they win it? I don't know. But I know they can definitely get there because and, and, and remember yep. what I what, what I said when we were talking about it. I said if Joel Embiid continues to move his game up levels, there's nobody in 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 the East that can stop him, or whatever team makes it out the West, he's going to dominate. So that's going to be a problem, man. That's going to be a problem. I think they I think they have a legitimate shot of winning it this year. They 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 really do. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take what I said about Q back. He, that man ain't crazy. Uh, I think he was just a, a, a bit fanatical at the moment, <laughs> but 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 it's legit. They they, they are one hundred percent legit. Yeah, I think instead of me having them going to the Eastern Conference Finals losing to to Cleveland, I, I, I can see them in the finals now. Like I I can see them in the, their road going to the finals. I can see it because like 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 FIFO mentioned. You have a possibility of either playing Milwaukee or Boston. They can get them. You know what I mean? That that's that's done. Then you might end up matching up against a Toronto. 
let's say if Cleveland, you know, barely get past Indiana and lose to Toronto, which I kind of don't see that happening either, but say they play Toronto in East Conference Finals, they gonna get them, and then they, and then you looking at that day in the finals, so it's like, I, I, yeah, Q. Q didn't sound as, as crazy, and, 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 you know, the biased fan base in them wasn't as, as nuts as I thought it was. But, yeah, I, I had them going Eastern Conference Finals. But now, yeah, I can definitely see them. In the finals of 2018, man, Ben Simmons' rookie year doing some Magic Johnson-type stuff and taking his team to the finals. That's crazy. Now, winning it, I won't go that far. But having them playing in the finals, I'm feeling well, a little B, more. Let's play your game, B. What if? What if they win? What if? What if they win? That'd be insane. Like we wouldn't see something like this done since Magic. Like since Magic. That's crazy. That'd be crazy, man. Like so, if they pull it off and win, be either the using the Golden State destination. It's the new free agent. It's the new. Yep, it sure would be. Yep, uh, hands down, man. Playing with Ben Simmons and Joel. What? That'd be crazy. And speaking of, Joel got almost a triple double already. Jesus Christ, they ain't even <laughs> in the third quarter yet. This dude got 15 points, nine rebounds, and um, oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at the defensive rebounds and rebounds, but yeah, he got nine rebounds and two sit. Damn, two steals. And Ben, now Ben Simmons almost got triple double. 12, 12, six, and seven. Damn, that's crazy. Too easy for them boys, man. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you, you know what's the crazy thing about watching them play? Neither one of them really dominates the ball. And I think that when you watch, you know, when you watch Milwaukee play, it, 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 it is hard to watch them play, man. The ball mm. comes, they might run pick and roll, and everybody's watching. And everybody's playing off of one guy. But when you watch Philly, you know, and, and dare I say, they look a lot like Golden State in terms of their offensive movement. Right. Like, like, obviously, the way that they, they, they want to attack is completely different, but the results are kind of the same where they, you get open layups and open three-point shots, and they defend extremely well. But the thing that gets me when I watch Philly is how much movement they have, and everything is live. Like, you have two like like two big guys setting a pick for, for J.J. He's coming around from the baseline, coming up to the wing. You got uh, Bellinelli running the, 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 the baseline to the other wing. You got pick and roll with, with Ben Simmons and Embiid. It's, it's like pick your poison. If you come and help, they got shooters all over the place, including Embiid. So it doesn't matter that Ben can't can't shoot, right? So so I, I, th- I think if they make it and Golden State makes it, I think it's going to be interesting on how they decide to guard uh, um, uh, Ben Simmons because I, I think that you're going to see a lot of Andre Iguodala on him. But but <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I I, I think they actually have a, le- a legitimate shot of beating Golden State. I think they have a legitimate shot of winning it all this year. Mm. It's a it's, it's it's a fun exercise, man. To to think about it. Um, you know, what, what I like about the Sixers that I've seen so far um, is that they're responding to adversity like they've been playing in the league for years. You know, you look at the game they won last year, that was a close game. And, and Ben Simmons, he, you know, he, he closed it out. You know, he put his head down and, and, and he got that bucket. Joel Embiid, you know, came in and, and, and took over. Um, in the first game, it was it was the it was the Europeans jacking up threes and hitting them from everywhere. They responded to a loss, and um, and and you got to credit JJ Redick for that, um, and, and the coaching man. And I go back to the beginning of the year when they started out slow and they were losing, and there was a close game that, and I forgot who they were playing. It, it don't really matter, but. And B was highly upset that they lost that game. Like he was pissed and he was disappointed. And that showed me that his attitude, it, he was in, intent on changing the culture of Philly, not years ahead, but right now, this year. And we're starting to see that play out um, in the playoffs. So it's, it's been fantastic. It was, it's been fun. It's been exciting to watch. And um and they're proving a lot of us wrong. So we'll 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 see what happens. But yeah, I mean, Toronto, Washington, maybe even Cleveland, like do we trust any of them right now with the way they're playing? Not really. So and they run off they have an offense. Like that's the other thing. They actually run an offense. 
And see, and, and, and when it gets, see, you talked about adversity, right? Like e- even Houston, o- almost all of the best teams, when it when it gets clutch time, they play a lot of one on one basketball. When you watch Philly, they run their sets. They know what they want to get, where they want to get it, and how they want to get it, and they execute. You know what I'm saying? And, and like you said, man, for a young squad, especially for your two best players to be under the age of 25 to do this. <laughs> it's a problem. It's a ma- it's a major problem for the rest of the league because if these boys taste championship, just the, just 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 the finals, they don't have to win. But if they taste that, what like what do you think that's going to do for them next year? That's only going to advance their progression. That's only going to increase the 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 possibilities of signing a LeBron or a Paul George or KD or Kawhi. Like, like that's that's what that does. And, and they're already great. So they're only going to be that much better. So so, man, I'm 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 really interested to see how the rest of the playoffs go. But second round, I, I, I think they got that because Milwaukee or Boston cannot beat them. Um, so so we're so I'm already penciling them in for the Eastern Conference finals. Um, and I think that they they can dismantle Cleveland. Be, because because what they, what are they gonna do with Joel, man? Are you gonna play Tristan? <laughs> like like who, like what are you gonna do? And then Toronto? Oh my God, the, the biggest choke artist in the NBA. So yeah, I, man, I, I'm just excited. You know what? I, I'm I'm, and I know I'm rambling and ranting, but these playoffs are the most unpredictable playoffs we've seen in the last ten years. For sure, for sure, yeah. Um, which is great. Uh, it's exciting for guys like us. Um, because especially after the way the last couple of seasons ha- have gone. So we actually got some drama. Um, all right, well, let's get into these questions. Um, so let's see here. <laughs> so at Carly Ray Lolo, um, her, her first question was why LeBron so thick for no reason. Clearly that's a joke. Um, I have no answer for that question. That's none of my business. Uh, <laughs> her real question, I presume, is where is Dez going to sign? Um, I have no idea. A lot of people are tapping out the Ravens, the Giants, and somebody else said no. So um, I don't know, man. I, I think for me, I think it's going to depend on what happens in the, uh, in the draft and w- when teams actually get a chance to uh, – fill out their roster with draft picks. I think that'll help determine where he, he's going to go. Um, but he eventually gets signed somewhere um, where I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, do you guys have any inkling of where he may go? If not, we can move on. Um, I, I, I think, you know, based per Dez, I think he wants to stay in the NFC East. And I, I mentioned this before. I mean, hey, Redskins are always known for giving, you know, veterans, overpaying a lot of veterans. <laughs> Guys go there whenever they know they, they ain't what they used to be and then their skill level kind of diminished a little bit. Hey, Redskins, come to Redskins. We'll, we'll pay you a boatload of money. So I'm pretty sure he'd get the money that he would, that he is looking for and then some. Um, and, so I, and then he'd still be in NFC East. He'd, play, he'd see the Cowboys twice a year. So um, I think I can see that. I, mean, I was also hearing um, Green Bay. You know, now with them losing uh, Jordy Nelson, you know, there's Brian to be a nice little plug to have in. And now you got someone like Aaron Rodgers throwing you the ball. So that would be, you know, an interesting fit um, if he if he goes there. But that's all I got. I got I got I got Redskins and Green Bay. I, I was also hearing the Giants. But I mean, if he go there along with Odell, that that you talking about diva. You talking about diva. Well, they already Double said. Divas. Yeah, they already Double. said no too. Oh, okay, the, the Giants said no. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. so here's the thing. I think Des potentially could be out the league. Um, wow. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. No, hey. I mean that's not. No, that's not bad. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, people. Look, go ahead. Look, when you have as many, I think he was the number one wide receiver in drops last year. Yeah. Like you get paid to catch the ball, and if you can, if you have the most drops, what do I need you here for? Because, first of all, you're not necessarily a locker room guy, right? Like, you're a me guy, which most wide receivers are. So we understand the nature of the position. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You're not producing. 
if you produce, then we can put up with some of that. But you're not producing. So who would want that? He's a headache. I think I think it's more so one of those things that um, I think it's more so one of those things when a team gets in a bind. Um, maybe they thought they were somebody that they they aren't and going in through maybe week three, week four. And we're like, hey, we need a spark plug. They might hit up Dez, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't see Dez signing with a team. I, I, I just, yeah, it's kind of like the Eli thing, man. Who wants that guy? You have the most drops in the NFL, and we, and he's had some point blank joints. I'm talking about slant. We, we talking about wide open, taking your eye off the ball. Don't nobody want to deal with that, man. It's, it's. I, I, th- I think Dez might be out the league. Uh, I, I definitely think somebody will sign him, but I, I don't think we'll be able to pick it in the off season. I think it's more so we have to see how the season is going to go. Somebody that didn't think they, didn't think where the, this is where they would be around week three to week six, they'll pick up Dez. But I don't think he's going to sign in the off season. Man, FIFA on fire with the taste tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um at Mike Skill One and uh hit, this is a question. We kind of already answered this earlier. Uh why are the Trailblazers so trash is the question. Um but we've already kind of addressed that earlier, so I just wanted to acknowledge the uh the tweet. So thank you for sending that in. Uh at Jack Main. If Curry doesn't play, does the do the Pelicans have a legitimate shot at knocking off the Warriors? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the way they play? Hell yeah. Yes. yes. Hell Remember, yeah. like I like I said, people, they motivated, man. They motivated because they got not you got swept by them last time. And you go in there and Stephen Curry, let's say Stephen Curry missed two games. That that's a chance. That's a shot. Yeah. I think that's a shot. They gotta you gotta steal one of those. Steph, yeah, yeah, Steph yeah, you gotta yep. game or two. Yep, you, you, you got to steal. steal one of you got to steal one of those. You and got I think to. That, I think Drew and Rondo need to be salivating because, look, if Steph's not 100%, can they still beat the Pelicans? Yes. But it's going to be extremely difficult because Drew is a bigger, stronger, faster player than Steph. And Rondo, we don't have to question. That's playoff. We're, we're, we're witnessing playoff Rondo. So, so... With all that being said, if Steph's not 100%, that, that's going to hinder the success of, of Golden State. And I think that's going to put a lot of pressure on Draymond as a ball handler. And you're going to have seven whatever Anthony Davis on him. So that adds to that. That's going to put a, an extreme amount of pressure on KD. I think he's almost going to feel like he's back in his OKC days where he has to carry a lot of that load. Because, look, we know that. Clay Thompson is gonna get he's a catch and shooter. He ain't nothing, right? So he's gonna you're gonna be able to catch and shoot and move around. But the, the onus is going to be placed onto KD, and I think it's gonna be a lot. Can KD shoulder it? Of course he can. You know, say we're talking about he the second, he top three in the league. So so he needs to be able to carry it, right? But 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 the Pelicans have a legit shot, especially like how B alluded to earlier. This this man Anthony Davis averaged anywhere between thirty five to forty two. Oh oh, it 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 it's, it's it should be six or seven. I'll say this. I think he has a shot, um, even if Curry plays, because if you remember the last time the Warriors lost the finals was when Curry came back uh, from a similar injury and he he never got right except for a couple of games uh, where he was talking about I'm back. Um, and with Drew Holiday and Rondo, I think they could put a lot of pressure on Curry, who may have limited mobility, especially if Anthony Davis performs at the levels that um, that you guys are saying that that or thinking that he, he probably would be. So, um, so yeah, so there you have it. You I think what, that Ken? would be uh, definitely really interesting. My coach had tells me that Steve mm-hmm. Curry is going to have – Draymond handling the ball a lot and just having stuff off the ball because that the type of pressure that both Rondo and Drew can apply, I, I don't think Steph's knee is is ready enough for that. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's a lot of a lot of stress and pressure to put on Steph to deal with that type of pressure from Drew. Damn. 
Yeah, that is. That's yeah. I I, I agree. I, I'm just. I'm just interested to see how, like you mentioned, how the guard play is going to do. Like how the Rondo going to do against, you know, opposed, you know, supposedly Steph Curry and Clay, or maybe just Clay. You know, maybe, maybe, like you, like we mentioned, if Steph miss one of those games or two of them, Pelicans got to take one. They have to. You, they have to take one of these first two home games. Even, even if Steph play, they got to in order to have. I think to have a good shot. If they still one of these away games, man, is is this this we might be in for a, a crazy series. I have a feeling because Anthony Davis is gonna be a matchup night for, nightmare for for that front court. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, all right, cool. Uh, thank you for the question at Jack Main. Uh, moving on at Fight Owens five five. Uh, man, y'all got some some <laughs> interesting Twitter names. Uh, man. All right, so his question, he had three, but we already talked about the Sixers possibly, possibly going to the finals, so we'll skip that one. This is about Westbrook. Uh, what will losing this series mean for Westbrook's legacy, and what's wrong with the Thunder offense? Um, who who, who man, wanna I'm, first? man, I'm so, I'm so disappointed in Westbrook, man. Damn. Like, for one, you know, you go and you, you, you take your emotion out on because Rick Rubio had a triple-double. You going on news conference saying, "Oh yeah, we gonna we gonna shut that down, dude." That's Rick Rubio. What y'all need to worry about is the freaking elephant in the room, Donovan Mitchell. Like he's the one. This rookie is lighting y'all up. Like, and you want to put your energy on to Rick Ricky Rubio? Like, dude, you need to focus. For one, you need to focus on um, winning the game. For one, y'all need to focus on winning this series because Melo is looking like. He almost looking like he don't even belong in this league no more. Retired. Like he, yes, it like mm. <laughs> he don't even like he belong in this league anymore. And and you know and it's just like the shooting, their shot selection has been horrible. Like it's so much stuff wrong with OKC and for Westbrook to put all his energy into Ricky Rubio and you getting lightened up by Donovan Mitchell. Uh, that's a little disappointing. I mean, you know, we all know Donovan Mitchell is it, Donovan Mitchell is the rookie, but I just feel like. With the dog, that old school mentality that we always hold Westbrook to, you know, it's the so-called, you know, quote unquote, one of the last Mohicans of the old school. Uh, that w- that looked a little weak, Westbrook, in my opinion. It looked a little weak for you to go at Ricky Rubio, which we know he's not going to duplicate those type of games like that. And you going at him, and then you show your emotions out there like that and lose control. Yesterday, well, I think yeah, the day before yesterday, yeah, yesterday, you lose, you lose, you lose your emotion like that, and you know you're the you're the captain. You 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 make this team go, and so for you to lose your composure like this, that's bad, man. That that's not good. So yeah, I was I was disappointed at Westbrook, man. Like I, I was definitely disappointed at dude how he reacted, how you you going at somebody, you going at a little chihuahua where well, you need to be going at that at that pit bull because you a pit bull yourself. So like ah, I was just I was upset. But yeah, if to answer the question, if um if they do lose this, I mean we just. We're going to look at Westbrook as he might be that player that never wins one. Like, you know, uh, either that or he needs a coach that can steer him in the right direction. Because, remember, Allen Iverson was starting. He was, you know, before his 2001 year, he was kind of getting that 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 pin on him as well. Like, a selfish player, always, you know, he plays hard, plays his heart out, but don't nobody want to go play with him. He can't make everybody better. But look what happened when Larry Brown got there. I think the right coach got there for Allen Iverson to really – kind of like shine and have his moments where I think the same thing might need to happen for Westbrook. I don't think that coach Billy Donovan, I don't think he's the right coach for him. I think, I think we need to have a coach that can really steer Russell Westbrook in the right direction, man, because at this rate, yeah, he's going to go down as he's going to be a hell of a player, great player. You know, we have plenty of great players, hall of fame players that never win championship. I think he's just going to go under, he's going to be a player that that's going to be, Hey, Westbrook, you was amazing. You average triple double. But you just never won, never never got a ring, you know. So I, that's what I think is going to happen at this rate, as far as his legacy. Yeah, I, you know, I think B hit up uh, on a lot of things. I think, um, you know, and, and I've – look, man, y'all listen. Yeah, man, we hot in this bitch, man. We hot in yeah. here today. Yeah, man, we are. We are. <laughs> if you listen to Dead in Sports, man, go back. I've been said – Russell Westbrook needs a head coach that can put a system around him, tame him, make him understand 
basketball principles from a point guard perspective. Now, does he have every other intangible? Of course. But I will always say his Achilles heel is decision making and obviously, you know, controlling some of that rage that that runs so so rampant inside of him. You know what I'm saying? And key moments, he, he has to be able to control that. But at the end of the day, I think them losing to Utah makes OKC a desert for free agents. Who's going to want to go there, especially if Paul George walks? So not only did KD walk, Paul George is going to walk. You already know Carmelo's going to opt into his contract because the way he's playing, if he opts out, he's going to get uh, a league minimum. And yep. I think he's slated to make 28 next year. So yep. he's not going to give that up. He's not giving so, that up. So nope. He's not going to give that up. That, that'd be a, the, the most stupidest financial decision. So if Paul George walks, Melo stays, you know, I think, I think Russell is cut from that, from that cloth of he, he's not going to go anywhere. He's, he's going to ride it out. He's a ride or die guy. I get it, respect it. But until they get the right coach and he, and they can prove that they can tweak Russell to to be a better point guard. It's only going to be a Russell Westbrook show. So what it means for his legacy, um, I think B, B touched on that as well, man. Like he, he's just going to be one of the greats, first ballot Hall of Famer, no question, that just doesn't win a championship. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong in that. But obviously you want to see guys like Westbrook that play – hard is as hard as he plays right like i want to say he plays basketball in the right way in terms of his heart and his competitive uh fervor but at the end of the day is that enough to win a championship and i don't think it is but it but it's not going to diminish the the overall legacy of russell westbrook we're, we're always going to have questions he's always been the villain it, the man averages a triple double and we question it he doesn't average a triple double and we question it we question about kd we we're always going to have questions regarding Russ, but the only true answer is he's great and that that's just where it is I, I don't think regardless of however many playoff losses he has right like uh, uh the, the 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 logo lost eight times in the finals or nine times or some ridiculous like that mm -hmm. right but he's still the logo at the end of the day we're going to remember the triple double years we're going to remember how russell westbrook competed every single game in practice everywhere that's what we're going to remember. That's never going to be hampered by any playoff loss. So I think his legacy as as what it is as of right now will still be intact when he's gone. I think Russell Westbrook's legacy will be under uh, – I think his career would be underappreciated. Um, and, and he's being attacked from every angle possible. Um, and – Russell Westbrook is a victim of that dog mentality that we love and adore so much from when we grew up watching basketball. And be your right, there's nobody around to tame him, to bring, help him harness that energy um, and utilize his talents to the best of his ability. Allen Iverson is, is, is a perfect comp for him, and Allen Iverson is a big fan. And it would be great – if Allen Iverson reached out to him and had a conversation with him about, you know, being able to play the game in the right way um, from a point guard perspective. But I think that I think we're going to look at the triple doubles. I think people will look at those as 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 little to nothing or meaningless because they're going to look and say, well, did he win a championship? Because that's the world we're in right now. Um mm -hmm. But is there anything wrong with going down in history as a Barkley? And I disagree. Or, oh, you Because look you at do? Oscar Robertson. We, we, we give this man so much props for the triple-double. How can we not give props for Russell? Because of his style of play and because Oscar he doesn't. Window. Well, yeah, that too. And he doesn't. And, and we just didn't have media. So he, he wasn't heavily scrutinized. So I, I and people are already looking at this triple double like everybody that played the game know what it what it took to get it and and they marvel at it but everybody outside of that all they're gonna look at is like yeah but he he lost in the first round though come on FIFO you know that's what they're gonna say and I and I think that's gonna follow him because of all of the stars um, that have left him but 
let's go through a little exercise because everybody want to say Harden left. Look at Harden's success. Look at KD's success. Look at, you know, he had Obaka, and look what happened to him. He had Oladipo, and look what happened to him. Let's talk about Oladipo for a second. Oladipo credits this season to learning under Russell Westbrook, and now Oladipo is the number one option and not the second option. So, of course, his numbers will improve, and Oladipo may not have turned into the player he is today if it wasn't for Westbrook. So Westbrook deserves some credit for that, and Oladipo is on record for saying that. Um, let's look at Ibaka. Is Ibaka the same guy since he left OKC? I, nah, he isn't. He's barely a third option in, in Toronto. Let's look at James Harden. James Harden, 65 wins. James Harden has had MVP seasons. Um, has James Harden showed up in the playoffs? No. No, I don't think so. So James Harden and Russell Westbrook, we can possibly say they're kind of on the same level. Um, now, this year it may all change because Harden may win. But you know what that took? It took Chris Paul coming there to change that. So um, let's look at KD. KD love. What do people say about KD? KD won a title, title when he left Westbrook. KD joined the, 70, joined the 73 win team. Thank you. Thank you. So everybody want to point out all of the players that improved or has gone on to better, you know, to success when they left Westbrook. And I'm not denying that that's true. But the only person that has really won anything since we want to look at that is KD and look at the way he did it. So I think the narrative and the conversation and the way they frame things around around, around West, Westbrook is, uh, is, is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And I think that is going to be his legacy unless somebody comes along and change him. So now the, the offense, that was the other part of the question. Look, man, go back and listen. I argue – we had a big debate about Billy Donovan uh, years ago, two years ago, I think. Um, you just called I'm, it too soon, Ken. You you had to give that man a little time. Not not now. You right, but but back then he <laughs> wasn't right. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it, man. And 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 um and now people are and and to your to your point, FIFO, um, he's been given the time that you said he needed, right? And now people are saying, all right, you know what? We, we got to look at him, and his name is starting to come up more and more. And when you have guys like – people look at Westbrook and what he hasn't been able to accomplish with the players he's had. Well, Billy Donovan has also had these players, and he had a 3-1 lead that he blew. He lost uh, – now, last year, you know, whatever. He didn't have anybody. He just had Westbrook. So Westbrook did what he did to get him there. But then this year, Paul George, Melo, no offense. He's Scott Brooks 2.0. Scott Brooks light. He, so um, I think Billy Donovan is going to go, and, and we can look at uh, him as the problem with this Thunder offense. The Jazz actually run sets. They actually have an offense. They, they, they look functional on the team. The Thunder don't look functional on the team, and part of that has to do with this inability to, uh, to rein Westbrook in. So, um, so I don't know, man. I, I, I still think they're going to come back and win this series because – there's just a lot of things. Yeah, I. You know what? You about to win three straight? Yeah, I. I. I do. I do. They. They should have won. Uh, one game. I think they were about sixteen. Wasn't you talking? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. Wait, hold on. Get him. What was you him. talking about? Get him. Donovan Mitchell, rookie of the year, and now this guy he out here balling. Got 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 this squad on the brink of elimination. You're yeah. talking about OKC gonna come back? What the hell you saw in OKC to make you think that? Because first of all. OKC is actually positive 13 when Russell is on the bench and negative 13 when he's when he's playing. So 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 when your best player is on the court and you're negative 13, Ken, let me know what you seeing to make you think that they're gonna win three straight, bro. Because I don't see it. And and, and that that is what I'm I'm seeing. Westbrook, Paul George, Melo have been completely inept in the fourth quarter. They have not played up to their standards. And when they have, they've looked like the better team. Billy Donovan need to get somehow Coach Gobert out of the paint and get Westbrook in more um, more lane, more driving lanes. But they've had leads in all of these games, and they lost them. So they're just not closing. Westbrook has taken, I heard, one shot in the fourth quarter. 
He's not playing up to his standards. And if they play up to their standards the way they need to play and where they should be playing, then yeah, they can win three straight. But right now, okay. would you all okay, hold on. You don't you hold guys on. don't think they're underperforming. I think they're Ken, underperforming. Ken, the, these boys had ten assists all game. All they, game. All game. And they are the the lowest assist team in the playoffs. How 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 do how do you how do you win like that, Ken? I, I look, basketball is a team sport. And if the number one team stat you're the worst in, it doesn't matter how well you're playing in the fourth quarter or whatever. That means that nobody else has any type of rhythm because your three main horses are getting the, the lion's share of the shots, which it should be. But at the end of the day, when you don't have a system, you don't get other guys involved. They're not getting a sis, Ken. That's a, again, I don't know what you're seeing that lends you to believe that they can win three straight. Now, if you tell me they can win one or two, okay, I give you that. Just because of the great – we're talking about right. two first ballot Hall of Fame. I give you that. Just also the strength of that, I'll give you that. But three straight games, Ken, the way they're playing, the way that they pretty much played all season, they've been a roller coaster ride. Sometimes they look like, damn, they could maybe be the best team. And sometimes they're like, damn, you, you guys got three all-stars? And we're seeing the, damn, y'all got three all-stars type of squad. I, I just I don't I don't see it. And then look, they've given Utah too much confidence. This boy, jo- the, 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 the man, the man, Ingram, all up in playoff <laughs> P face. He all up in the face, man. Who this guy? Who who is Joe Ingles? Undrafted guy, all up in playoff P's face, man. Then you got Donovan Mitchell out here getting thirty. He getting thirty a game. He a rookie, man. Look, 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 Ken. I, I look. Maybe you need my my prescription because because, <laughs> bro, I I don't know what you're watching. I I'll put I'll put it to you to, to you like this: two of the next three are in OKC. You just take care of business at home and go get one in in in, in Utah. Now that tough, that man, with that defense, man, the defense that Utah's been playing. Come on now. I, They're the I best agree. defense in the playoffs right now. The best, yes, defense in the, the best playoffs. defense in the playoffs. Easy. Okay, of Ken. OKC's ineptitude. That that's why. But look, man, like what the, do you the, mean? The, they, they, they were they were the third best defensively rated team in the NBA overall. I'm talking about in the, the best in the playoffs. But they're no. the best in the playoffs. That doesn't have nothing to do with OKC. That has everything to do with Utah. That's right. Look. Uh, the assist, Westbrook is triple double. When he gets triple doubles, they win. He needs to go back to triple double Westbrook. He they have to get out of this first round. Playoff P can't let Joe Ingles work him like that. And they they're leaving this man wide open. Anyway, man, I, I look. It, it doesn't look it doesn't look good. But we've seen teams blow three one leads. I think OKC can play better, and I think they will. Um, but we'll see. I'm on an island. Um, let's let's move on. Uh, Al at Al Blackstein asks, "How much longer does Lou have in Cleveland?" I I think this is his last season, win or lose. I think, um, and you know, even when he had the health issues a while back, um, they were they they were starting to put that out there that that this may be his last season. Um, and put I, some air quotes on that, Ken. What, health, health issues, <laughs> yeah, air quotes. <laughs> yeah, I think health. I think health is going to sit him down. And if LeBron leaves, we know he's out for real, for real. So I think this would be his last year. Uh, Lou just ain't got it, man. Nah. Um, but I'm at, with you, man. Lou, yeah, Lou, Lou, Lou doesn't have it because he looks like eighty percent of the other coaches in the NBA. Where you run, pick, and roll. And you let your your best guys go, right? And and I'm not saying that that is the worst way to to run a, a, an NBA team, but if you look at the 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 the, the, the past champions, they all have systems. Even even the Miami uh, LeBron squads, they they had a system. Maybe, maybe it wasn't you didn't see the structure all the time because when you play with D Wade and LeBron, like structure what like you just let those guys go so i get it but if you look at san antonio look at golden state you look at some of the best teams now 
they have systems. And Ty, and I always talk about it. Ty Lu at this point, and you were right, but you weren't right at the time when you said it about Ty Lu because <laughs> you're too early again. Because you, you gotta let a co- you gotta at least give a season to a coach to for him to to, to instill what he wants. And 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 Ty like like what is the what 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 is what do they hang their hat on? Because it ain't defense. And Ty Lu this year had two squads. You had an old squad that couldn't move. Now you got young guys that can move. And, and, and your defense is still paltry. So, so, so what? So, what is Ty Lue's calling card at the at the moment? Right? Like, is, is it Bron? Bron is making Ty. Bron made David Black. Bron has made every coach. So, to me, to answer the question, this is the last year for Lou. Win, win or lose, win, win or lose. I, 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 I think, I think it's a wrap. Yeah, I think Lou is done too. Um, you know. It, is is done, uh, and I think even though I don't think FIFA agrees that you don't think you don't think Brian is staying, right? You think he's gone? I I, I think so. I I think we have to wait for the off season. I think we have to see um, how how strong of uh, moves that Cause Cleveland is going to make. If, if Cleveland stay and if Lou is out, I can see my man from uh, that used to coach Memphis come there. Oh yeah, Fisdale. Yeah, I can see yeah. I can see Brian boosting for him to come there. You know, if Brian stays at Cleveland. Yeah, but you know, honestly, man, I think I think Cleveland just needs to start looking at life beyond LeBron. You know, uh, I-, I would just thank him for his services. Obviously, you would want him because that boosts the 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 franchise value. But at- but at this point, you really have to think about life without Brian because he's in his fifteenth year and. For the for however many years he decides to play, he has to be in a competing situation. This Cleveland squad, and, and you know what, I, I hats off to Cleveland because they did a hell of a job. They look, I, I feel that that they did the best in terms of the Kyrie move. Um, I think that obviously at the trade deadline they did the best um, that they possibly could. I think that they given this staff. Um, in this roster, every opportunity to play its best around LeBron. Um, so so I, I, I tip the hat off. But at the end of the day, this squad isn't championship ready. Um, I don't know how much more championship ready you can get at the end um, or in the summer through, through, through trades and the draft. Um, so, again, Cleveland just needs to start looking at life after LeBron. They're going to have – potentially a top three pick this year you there's some guys in this draft and you need to get one of those guys and that needs to be the face of the of your franchise moving forward and i think lebron is probably going to pick some place that he knows perennially he's going to be in at least in the conference finals guaranteed he that's just that's just where he is in his career so again hats off to cleveland but i think he's gone and tyloo's gone too hmm all right um at Yeller Yurt, Y E L I R Y E R T. Uh, what is Utah capable of? We kind of discussed that. Um, the second part, second question uh, that accompanies that is what moves do they have to make to become contenders? Um, I think they need to improve the bench, although the bench, the bench has been productive um, in spots throughout the playoffs so far. Um, throughout the season, man, they were 30 and 8 down the stretch. But um, but yeah, I just think uh, a couple of more pieces on the bench would be uh would be good, and I think their starting five is I think their starting five is okay. So I think if they improve their bench and incorporate them into it, I think they'll be straight. Um, so we'll see if they move to the second round, and you know, according to uh, with three one lead, they should, according to everybody except me. Um, we'll see how they perform against the Warriors. So what are they capable of? I said, and I told the guys, I think they can go to the finals. But uh, who they get next? Houston, yeah, and I and and, and Gobert, like, how's Harden gonna get in the paint against Gobert? You know, and even though Houston shoots a lot of threes, but um, but yeah, we're talking about you know, FIFO just said they're the number one defensive team in the NBA, so I can see Houston struggling against them. It depends on how they close the series out with the Timberwolves. And if Donovan Mitchell step up to the, you know, and continue to perform, and Joe Engel continue to perform, and Derek Favors continue to be a beast, you know, it could happen. 
It can happen. Stranger things have happened before. So um, defense win championships. But um, it's a bit of a reach, but who knows? Um, what do you guys think as far as the questions? Uh, go ahead, Viva. If you got anything, if you don't, we can move on to the next. Okay, yeah, you move on to the next one. Yeah, we can right. move on. All right, cool. Uh, at Ill Mind of Pat, this will be easy. Why is Hassan Whiteside overlooked? Uh, just look at the series and just look at him against Embiid. He's been hurt all year. Um, his attitude, I don't think, has been the best. And, um, and, and I think that's why. At Otis M. Garrison's, this, this might be interesting. Uh, discuss the Lakers' young core. What is Kyle Kuzma's ceiling? Will Brandon Ingram become top five in the world? <laughs> what should they do with Julius Randle? Will Lonzo make, make a big step this summer? One year later, grading D'Angelo Russell Trey. Okay, that's a lot. Um, oh, we can tackle it, though. I, well, I let's like go. It. Yeah, let's I like go. It. Wait, hold on. Let's... I'm 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 gonna pull it up because I I got I got I gotta see that. That's a lot to unpack. Um <laughs> Kyle Kuzma's ceiling, I think, is a perennial all-star. I don't think he's a superstar at all, but I definitely think he can make the all-star team anywhere between three to maybe six times um during his career. So so I I, I think where they drafted him, that's amazing value. Uh Brandon Ingram, top five in the world. Um I, I believe he has the potential, he still has the potential to be that. Um, I think he needs a little bit more dog in him. I saw it a little bit more this year. I'm interested to see what he adds in the offseason. Obviously, he's beyond uh, summer league, uh, so he's not going to play in summer league this year. At least I wouldn't expect for him to play summer league. So I'll, I would only be able to evaluate him by um, uh, preseason next year. But, but he has all of the potential in the world to be top five. Uh, Lonzo take a big step this summer. He needs to. Um, I think he will because when you look at the numbers, man, I said he was going to be a transcendent talent. I think he's a transcendent passer. And when you look at the number, he almost averaged a triple-double, and he struggled. Um, but we've seen him pick it up, right? And I, like I said earlier in the, in, in the podcast, even with rookie uh, quarterbacks, rookie players in the NBA, you want to see how these guys – take adversity, how they're able to progress throughout the year. And when they do have a big setback, how do they come back? And Lonzo had a lot of ups and downs in that first half. And then when he finally got healthy, he was on an upward trajectory. You know what I'm saying? So so definitely uh, I, I see Lonzo having a better year than year one. And he had a pretty damn good rookie year. I, I, I just think that the microscope is on him. Obviously, the bullseye on his back because of his dad. But he had a really good year. I'm, I'm expecting a second, uh, a better second year. And a year later, grading the, the Angelo Russell thing. They had to do it. Um, I like it. Um, because at the end of the day, look, when you have a guy that's leading your, your team and you don't feel that he's a leader and – very early on, he he burned a lot of bridges in that locker room. It 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 it, it was the right move. Um, so I I I, I let me see. I, I'm gonna have to put that at, at a, about a B plus because they also got what's his name? Uh, the twin, uh, Robin. Lo- uh, is it Robin or is it Brooke? I always get them confused. But Brooke, they got the, the the offensive Lopez. Yeah, you know Brooke Lopez. Out of that deal, Brooke Lopez. So so I think I think it was good in terms of Julius Randle. They got to let him walk. They mm. got to let him walk because you want to maintain financial flexibility, right? Like they, they're targeting two potential superstars with max contracts. There's no way that you can give Julius Randle any type of contract and still have the salary cap space to sign the guys that you want. So it now becomes of teams with the salary cap space with the best fit that are going to vie for him in unrestricted free agency. And the Lakers are just going to let him walk. At this point, you have Kyle Kuzma on a rookie deal. You have Brandon Ingram still on a rookie deal. You still have Lonzo on a rookie deal. That's the way that they're going to get better. They're not going to sign Julius Randle at all to any money. So he's going to walk. Where he goes, I don't know. B, you got anything? Uh, I mean, uh, Brandon Ingram, top five. Um Man, it's, it's, that's still so early. He got he definitely got the tools. He got the tools. He just need to kind of beef up just a little bit, a smidgen. Um, and what was the other one by Lonzo? Is Lonzo? Oh, do he need to make a jump this offseason? Definitely. 
Uh, he definitely need to make a need, need to focus. I hope I hope he is right now. Like I hope right now where they're not playing, he's in the gym. He's working on his game. He's working on anything he needs to do to, to improve his game. And uh, Randall, yeah, if you can if you can trade him off and get you know because I think the Lakers got enough to sign two big free agents. So you know, depending on who you bring on, I think you can let you can let Randall walk or you know just do a sign and trade with a big time free agent, something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think you should, I think you can definitely cut tiles with Randall because you can always kind of get another type of you, a, a prototype please. type of player like you Randall. Don't, you don't want to do a sign and trade because sign and trade means that you are taking back the same amount of salary that you're letting off. So that means you're going to sign Julius to a contract and then you're going to take back that same amount. Again, that that hampers their their salary cap flexibility. So I don't see them doing that. They're just going to let them walk. Just let them walk. Gonna OK, play. they're just going to okay. let them walk. Yeah, because you can you can find another prototype type of uh, Julius Randle. So I think that's it's not like he's like a, you know, a, a, a once in a lifetime type talent or whatever. You'd be like, oh, yeah, just let him go. You can find you can find another another power forward with that dog in him. That that's going that's going can do the same thing as Randall do. So, yeah, let him go. I just say let him walk. All right. Uh, shout out to Otis M. Garrison. Uh, yeah, this was a good question. A lot of uh, uh, very good pointed questions um uh fifo really did a good job of of breaking this down for you i'll just add um uh brandon ingram top five in the world um i don't know man i think that's tough i th- I think that's tough based on what i'm seeing so far ben simmons donovan mitchell um Embiid. um I, I i don't know if there's room jason tatum could be top five I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be room for him. Top 10, maybe, yeah. But I do agree. I think he has the ability, number two draft pick in the NBA. So there's talent there. Uh, he just needs to develop, and that's going to be up to the Lakers. Um, will Lonzo take a big step this this summer? <laughs> yeah, if he stopped trying to put out mitts tapes, he probably could. Um, Stop it, Ken. Stop it. Stop <laughs> hating on the man. Stop it. <laughs> so that's what I got for that. Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with FIFA on Julius Randle and Kyle Kuzma, um, and the D'Angelo Russell trade is what I want to add. Um, my thoughts to, I think it was a good trade. Um, I think it may have been an A trade actually because I think both parties ended up winning. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, I, I, L.A. just was probably too much for him, but I think. With Lonzo, it, Lonzo, because of his dad, funny enough, it doesn't seem to really he, – he, he's not buckling under the pressure, uh, it seems, so far. So um, I think he's used to playing under big lights or having to live up to high expectations. So L.A. seems like a perfect fit for him. D'Angelo Russell was able to go to another team without that pressure and to manifest into the player – um, I, I, you know, we talked about him before on the podcast in terms of his ceiling, but, um, but I think he was able to kind of go somewhere and just start anew. And, you know, he, he has his team and to be in Brooklyn who, uh, who can use a guy like him. Um, I, I think, and, and they got Okafor too. I think they got something to build off on. So now it's up to D'Angelo Russell to take this opportunity and build on it. So I think both parties ended up winning in that trade and D'Angelo Russell just burned out. So I, I think it's an A. I think it's an A based on uh, based on what we've seen from uh, this last NBA season. So um, so that's it. Uh, thanks for the question, Otis M. Garrison. Uh, just a few more here. Um, at Ant243 Estrada, what would – okay, what trade package would you give the Spurs if you were the Lakers – or Celtics. So um um this obviously is about Kawhi. So what trade package if you were the Lakers or Celtics will you give the Spurs for Kawhi Leonard? I'm going to take a back seat on this one. I'm not really good at this. So uh so FIFO if you got something what what would you do? And better yet, would you even do it? Uh if I'm the Celtics I probably wouldn't. And the reason is, is because I already got three of those guys. So I'm not moving the two youngins. 
I'm going to let the Gordon Hayward thing play out. Obviously, if they wanted to do Gordon Hayward for Kawhi straight up, I'd do it. But I don't think San Antonio would, obviously. So I, I think that's null and void there. But if, I, if I'm the Celtics, I'm good. Um, I, I, I'm, already, I'm already loaded up at that position. Um, so I'll pass. If I'm the Lakers, they're, they're, like what what can you get? Like like you don't you don't have anybody with with a big contract outside of I think Lou Aldang is still on the books mm-hmm. and, and and Robin Lopez or Brooke Lopez. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just I I don't see either one of those squads having enough to give them. Um, so so I, I don't know. I think that we have to look at other suitors. So I'm not I'm not going to go to the other suitors because you didn't ask that. I'm not going to give you that. But those two those two trade partners, I don't see it happening. All right, at Laker Boyasi, uh, if you were the New Orleans Pelicans, would you still offer Boogie the max considering his hundreds? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's come on. Yeah, you got to keep him. And I think that's probably just because. You know, Pelicans looking so great without them. You know, especially if they make a run in this playoff. You know, that's that that's that's always going to be the question. But no, book no. I mean, I know an injury <laughs> like that is scary because it's, it's to a big guy. But no, no you got to you got to keep booking. You got to keep him. You got to keep him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now there is a report that came out today. Uh, it was buzz, uh, not really confirmed, but they were saying that they uh. They were not considering it, but yeah, I'm I'm with the fellas, man. You got you got. I mean, come on, man, don't be silly. Um, all right, next, uh, will the Lakers sign Paul George in the off season? Be the best move for the team in the long term. So, okay, so no, simple. You don't think so? Nah, because here, I I think I think Paul George. I don't want to say this because it just has a negative connotation, but 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 he's a he's a tad overrated. Like I I don't think he's a savior. I, I I think I think he at best he's the second best player on the championship team, and I don't think the Lakers still have the guy, the best player on the championship team. So long term, if you if you don't get the other guy, then you you're just gonna be a playoff squad. You're, you're gonna be in mediocrity. You're you're, you're gonna be in, in purgatory. Like you're gonna make the playoffs, but you're not gonna have a good enough draft pick to draft somebody else that can put you over the top. And I like this whole just because we're a particular franchise, we're gonna attract free agents. That era is over with. We have seen that. It is over with. It does not matter the squad that you play for. You will get the same opportunities in terms of marketing and branding and all of that because your social media is more powerful than the squad that you play for. Your own personal brand is more powerful than the squad that you play for. So so to me, Paul George is good if he already goes to a squad that has established guys. So like if he goes to a Philly, if he goes uh, not, I'm just throwing them out there. I, I don't think it's a good fit, but Boston. If he goes to a Houston, if he if he go to uh, if he goes to a squad, you know, a Portland. Like like if he said, yo, like I I really like what Portland is. That's a scary team. Mm-hmm. But 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 him going to the Lakers, like like the Lakers are still young puppies, and they have yet to show you a, 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 an advancement or a big enough step to be like, oh, okay, these are the next guys. We're not saying that about them. Everything that the Lakers have right now is potential in cap space. That's it. That's what they're selling their free agents on. So to me, it's not established enough for a guy like a Paul George. See, a guy like LeBron, oh, it don't matter. It, it, like Because he's the main guy on the championship team. And that's the difference. There's not a lot of main guys on a championship team in free agency. So to me, if Paul George is the only free agent they can get, it's... I feel that the Lakers are struck out if that's the only guy they get. FIFO fire takes continue. Paul George overrated. My goodness. Wow. Okay. We'll have to come back to that one one day. Um, uh, do you agree with that, B? Not the overrated part, but Lakers signing Paul George, like the question. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I can see him definitely going – Going back to his home hometown in LA, especially with the debacle that we're witnessing with OKC, 
Because I, I was, I was, you know, of course, earlier season, I was like, okay, well, if OKC go to West Finals or Finals, uh, it's no doubt Paul George stay. But with this, what we're seeing, I, I can see him, you know, tucking tail and going to L.A., you know, playing for, you know, he always wanted to play for the Lakers. This would be his chance, I'm pretty sure. And Magic at some point has been in his ear a little bit in one way or another. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I can see him going back there, man. I, but, yeah, like people – it's almost like no point. It's like you, well, what are you going back for? I mean, you can't say I'm going back to win championship because Lakers is not on pace to be contending. Hell, they barely, they barely be a playoff team with if you just add Paul George there. So you know, it's not like Paul George would want to go there to be like, hey, look, I go here because I think I'm a, my my chance of winning championship is pretty good. So, I uh, man, he'd go there, but I, I don't see why. Um, you know, your chances pretty much be better staying at OKC, but. You know, with this debacle we witnessing, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think it would be the best move for the Lakers. Uh, they got a guy that want to be there. They got a guy that can get his own shot. Um, so a, a guy that has star potential, uh, superstar potential. Um, so I, I think it would be a good move for the team. They need to sign somebody. And they need to add to that young core, and to have a veteran, I think would be would be good. And you know, I, he wants to be there, so I, I think that matters. So I think it would be a good move for the, for the team. Um, so, but we'll we'll see. This offseason is going to be really interesting. Uh, moving on. All right, let's see more questions about the Jazz. Uh, my dad in sports question is, and this came from at KJA Ivy. Uh, why are people in the media and just fans in general so opposed to rooting for the Jazz when they have become the ultimate underdog but root and cover everyone else? Look, let me answer this question. All right, this is easy. Um, they're not opposed to the Jazz. They're opposed to what the Jazz don't bring to them, and that's clicks. They don't have – they don't bring traffic, and and that's what it is. LeBron, uh, Oak, Russell Westbrook, now Lonzo Ball – Lonzo Ball could suck, and they'll still cover him because it's traffic. It's a traffic-generated machine. Kevin Durant is arguably, uh, let's just say Kevin Durant is the second-best player in, in, in the league. He barely gets any coverage. They talk about, okay, it's the Warriors, because the Warriors it, it brings the, the clicks and the views because of Curry and Draymond, who's a firecracker, and, and Clay Thompson, and they had such a great story that they became the sensation of the NBA. So if you want the Jazz to receive more coverage, then root for Donovan Mitchell. Donovan, if Donovan Mitchell becomes a superstar, you best believe the Jazz will get coverage because he will lead to revenue, revenue meaning click. So that's why that sort of thing happens. So it's not personal. Yeah, it, it's definitely not personal. You already know next year Utah is going to get a bigger national schedule. <laughs> you got you got you got a guy that is a slam dunk uh, contestant. Plus, he getting thirty and knocking down threes and all of it. Yeah, the, the Utah Jazz will def- especially once they knock out OKC. Um, they're definitely going to get uh, more national coverage, and you're going to see more articles next year. This year, yeah, not so much. Who the, who in the hell saw? Donovan Mitchell doing what he doing. God, I know I sure did it. Most people didn't, right? Like, like nobody really saw what nobody pre- was. Able to I, I knew he was going to be good, but not this good. Like, I knew he was going to be something, but damn, I didn't know he was going to be like this before. Yeah, I don't. Nobody, nobody could have. Nobody could have. Yeah, I didn't see it. Um. All right, cool. So there you have it. Uh, at Virgo Child 69 do you think it's time for the Blazers, Wizards, and Hornets to make changes to their rosters regardless of playoff runs this season? Um, and what trades do you recommend for them to move forward from disappointing seasons? Um the Blazers definitely need to do some things to their roster. I definitely think they need to uh, develop their talent. Um, Zach Collins looked like he could play. Uh, Caleb Swanigan, let's see what he got. Um, uh, Pat Connaughton, uh, I can't Pat say his Connaughton. last name. Pat yeah. Connaughton. Yeah, Pat but Connaughton. You, 
you know what it is, though, Ken, with the Blazers, it, and I agree with you, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, is that they've already paid some of their underachieving talent um, in terms of Myers Leonard. Like, he has a big contract now. Not a big, I'm not, obviously not 20 million, but, you know, yeah. over 10, he's in the teens. Uh, there's another player, too, uh, I can't think of his name right now. And also, Mo Harkless. You know what I'm Like, I think collectively they're paying these guys close to 40 million in salary cap. And two of the guys can't play, like like they're not they're not in the rotation. Don't, that's the type of fat they need to trim. So I don't think that it's more so like wholesale changes, trade CJ, trade Dame. It, it's none of that. It's more so tweaking, but getting the right guy in there. That's that's the key thing. They need they need that wing player. That that's 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 that's, that's the key factor for them. Yeah, um, I think with the Wizards, I I, I mean. They got pieces. They got pieces. I mean, Otto Porter is taking a step forward. I think Oubre could take another step forward. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they can do to improve. Um, but some some things need to happen with them. Oh, I said it last week, uh, FIFO, you wasn't on here. I think they need to turn the keys over to Bradley Beal. I think Bradley Beal has proven when in, in John Wall's absence that he can carry a team. So I think he needs to – like, John Wall is dynamic – and and can play, but he he has a little Westbrook in him at times too. But Bradley Bill is a little bit more composed, and I think they really need to start focusing in a little bit more on him. So I would like to see that happen with them. I don't know if I'm, if I'm you with had you. Any th- and, okay, and you know what? With, 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 the, with the with the last two squads, I think they can actually help each other. Um, I think that they need to trade John Wall. I think that the Hornets would be a perfect place for him, uh, mainly because obviously uh, Washington would get Kemba in return. Mm. And then if I'm Michael Jordan, I'm clearing enough cap space to try to go get Boogie and be like, hey, look, I know you like everything over there with AD, but look, they were winning without you and they really don't care about you. But I got your homie. I got your college homie. And you haven't played with a point guard like him since then. So you know what? We and, and you already know John, John Wall on the back end, you know, is going to be pulling strings on, on, on trying to sign Boogie as well. So I, I, I think that that could be a move. I think that could be a play in terms of those two teams actually helping each other out. And then you'll see a new look Hornets with John Wall and Boogie as the face of the franchise. And then you'll see Kemba uh, with Washington instead of John Wall. So I, I, I can see a scenario like that happening. Yeah, that would be nice. You got anything to add, B? What do you? B. Be like, hey, no, I'm watching this game. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't got nothing to add. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, two more. Uh, his name is William. His 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 name. It should be a is, but it's not. His name is William. Uh, what is OKC's future? We've already talked about Paul George. So the second part of the question for those of you listening is where do Paul? Where do you think Paul George should go? Um, I think he should go to L.A. Um, but what is OKC's future? Melo will be back next year because he's going to get that check. Uh, Roberson will be back. Um, but I I don't know, man. Like, that whole team is, is a mess. Um, they, their bench is a mess. They don't produce. Sam Presti, he has, he has his work cut out for him because he went all in. He went all in on Paul George and Melo and – is looking like a first round exit. So Sam Presti is going to have to get back to work and see if he can pull off some more trades or deals. Um, but I think this future, and I think we kind of talked about it earlier, uh, FIFO and B is, you know, is, it's going to be Westbrook. Westbrook is going to be making 30 mil over the next couple of years. So um, you might be looking at your modern day AI. So uh, Paul George is going to leave and Melo is going to stay. And you're going to get mediocre results uh, again next year. And Billy Donovan may be gone after this year, too. And if he's not, he's going to be on an extremely short leash next year. Mm. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Um, last one. At Third Eye Ego, what do you think? Oh, no. Who do you think is the best still at a productive level amongst the older vets? still playing his examples were was Dirk, Manu, Crawford, 
Vince, et cetera. Uh, I think Manu and Crawford are two of the guys that I have. Dirk is definitely uh, taking a step back this year. Vince is just playing because he just can't leave the game. But Manu, we saw what Manu did uh, last in, in, in game four. And um, and I think Crawford just hasn't gotten enough tick in, in Minnesota, but I think he can still play the game. He still looks the same. So uh, that, those, those are the two I got. Yeah, that, that, that man, Jamal, man, me, me and yeah, I was, was going to say Crawford this. as well. Yeah, man, Jamal Crawford, hands down, because he still look like he's 20. Yeah. He still hoop like he's 20 years old. Like, there's no decline. He's not slower. You know, I know from experience that you get older, you lose a lot of agility. He hasn't lost any agility. He still be hurting people. He still can go off for 50 in game. Like, I, I think he's the most viable over 30-something guy that we have in the league right now. Yeah. What are you saying, B? You said Crawford, too? Yeah, I say Crawford, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think Vince Carter, let's see, he is um, the oldest active player right now, <laughs> 41 years old. So, anyway, um, man, this was fun. I enjoyed it. Thanks to everyone that sent in questions, uh, some really good questions. And, um, and, and, you know, we appreciate you guys. Uh, listening and being a part of this week's show. Um, that's going to do it for uh, us this week. Um, and we'll be back next week, man. Um, obviously with a lot more storylines to cover, um, as I think we'll be heading into the conference finals. I mean, uh, what, what is it? Wait, what's next round? Round two? What, what do they call yeah, it? The semi, semi, the East semi. semifinals, the West. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Yeah. There you have it. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's going to do it for us. We out. Please subscribe. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.